Hi, we're underneath the hood of our 1967 Pontiac GTO, 404 barrel. That's the only way they came in 1967. Tri powers were done in 1966. 67 became the 400 with the four barrel. Quadrajet carburetor does have the correct air cleaner on it. It does have the correct intake manifold, uh, correct fan shroud with the high flow uh, rectangular radiator in it. Uh, chrome valve pan covers the way it would have come in 1967. Does not have power steering or power brakes. Uh, car steers really well without it uh, and also stops just as well. Um, the exhaust manifolds are the split type uh, Pontiac High Performance like the 360 horse uh, exhaust manifolds. It does have the correct YS motor that this car should have been born with and it still retains. Uh, really a nice looking engine. There's no um, leaks ever dent anywhere. Valve pan covers, uh, intake manifold, the, uh, the well area, uh, front of the engine, water pump, timing chain cover. There's no leaks anywhere whatsoever on this car. Just as clean and straight a car as you'd ever find. Uh, the uh, heater is still hooked up for the uh, passenger compartment, still intact. The semi-flat black finish on the fender wells, the uh, firewall area, and the uh, radiator core support, which is totally unmarked in any way. Nice looking car underneath the uh, hood here. Uh, it's as nice original a car uh, as you could ever hope to find. Devin will show you some higher definition pictures of the engine so you can see the uh, attention to detail that's been uh, uh, set forth in uh, doing this engine compartment. It's a great engine compartment, a nice running engine. Very, very solid car. Hi, you're at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. And today our special guest, and everybody's special guest, is and everyone's favorite, is the 1967 Pontiac GTO. A real GTO car, not a clone. This is the real deal, guys. We'll go over this car. Uh, check, it's the first time I'm looking at it, actually. Uh, we're going to go over it and see what we can find aesthetically on the outside of the car. Fit, finish, chrome. Just go over it and uh, then we'll do an undercarriage, an interior, and a drive for you too so you have all the ammunition you need to go ahead and make a decision on the purchase of your 67 Pontiac GTO. So let's get started. It does have the correct GTO hood. No one's cut it open or anything. It's not a Ram Air car from the factory so it, it's retained its uh, originality of the hood. Uh, this car, by the way, is a, uh, from what I understand, is a one family owned car for the last 40 years and it's an unrestored car other than one repaint. So the interior retains its originality as does the undercarriage and the engine compartment. One repaint on the outside and let's see how good that is. So let's go over it. Fitment of the hood and paint and finish on the hood. Paint's very nice on this car. I mean very, very nice. The fitment is great, uh, about an eighth of an inch the whole way down both sides and across the cowl area. I don't know, fit to the hood and fenders. What the heck? Probably should adjust that hood so it fits a little bit better, huh? It doesn't rattle going down the road. That's something for us to do. Uh, trim around the grill area, just as nice as can be. The uh, uh, metal in the grill itself is really nice. The chrome finish is nice. The uh, parking lights themselves are really in great condition. Anodized aluminum trim the same way. Uh, bumper fitment. That's about spot on. I don't know how you'd get one to fit much better than that. Chrome on the bumper is absolutely fantastic. The header panel fit to the front is actually nice. It's just this wood has to go down, has to be adjusted. Chrome on the front of the bumper, there's no marks or dings or, or stone marks that were kicked up uh, through the years on it. Nice front end of the car. I mean, other than a hood adjustment, I don't see a dent, a mark, a scuff. The alignment is very, very nice with the bumper and the hood itself. Uh, chrome, around, chrome around the uh, headlights. Most of these are all pitted up. This one is not. It's in excellent condition. A couple of very, very fine. You won't see them. You really have to look to see them. Actually, I'm not going to even call them patina because they may have been there whenever these were chrome plated. It may be uh, the pot metal when it was chromed 
there's a little bit of roughness underneath it. It doesn't look like it's deterioration though. Gorgeous front end of the car. Let's go down the side and see what we can find. Okay, driver's side of our little GTO. Little GTO. Um, fender lip molding. No marks whatsoever. GTO designation. Um, emblem on the side. Fitment of the front fender to the door. Uh, to the windshield uh, pillars. To the cowl area. It's just as straight and nice as you'd ever, ever want to find. Really great looking fitment of this, this car. Windshield pillars, just as nice as can be. Tinted glass in the front window. Original equipment, uh, wiper arms. Uh, Anco style, more modern blades on them. When you look down into the dash area where it transitions onto the base of the windshield, this is as crystal clear and nice as you will ever find on a car. There's absolutely no deterioration on the uh, uh, front part of the dashboard, the padded area is real nice, no cracks or chips or anything on it, no deterioration, no fading. Same with the uh, paint that goes from the uh, padded area to the uh, base of the windshield. Nice as you're ever going to find on one. Really, really nice. Roof itself it is a roof. It's just as smooth and shiny and glassy as can possibly be. There's no dents or marks or dings in it anywhere, absolutely nowhere. Around the uh, wing area. Uh, I'm going to call this original rubber. It doesn't need to be replaced. It's still all intact. Has a little bit of resilience left to it yet. Must be tinted glass all around. And this this, mirror, this uh, wing is also tinted. Chrome around this wing is absolutely flawless. The correct style GTO, non-adjustable mirror, uh, driver's side, anodized aluminum across the top of the door. Couple. Again, you're not going to see this, but I'm going to point them out to you. There's very, very superficial dings. One, two, three, four, five, six of them. And by six of them, I mean you really have to look at an angle to get a reflection to see that there's a little tiny bit of a, what it came from, who knows. Drip rail, no dings, no marks whatsoever. Wipes and whiskers, just as nice and fresh as could possibly be. And I think they're original. I don't believe they've been replaced, nor do they need to be. Paint on the door, down to the rocker panel. The bottom of the door and the rocker panels themselves have stainless uh, uh, molding that run the entire uh, length of this vehicle. Really adds a lot of pizzazz to it. Door itself, paint is absolutely beautiful. Door handle, chrome is flawless on it. Door needs a little tiny bit of a adjustment in, not much. Maybe I'm being too picky there, but uh, we're going to tweak that in just a hair. Then it'll be absolutely flawless. Quarter panel. Again, no dings, no marks, no chips. Sail panel. There's no marks, no indication of anything ever being uh, worked on in the uh, sail panel area, which would indicate a quarter panel had been installed on the car. And I don't believe that's the case. I believe this is all original tin on this car. Absolutely it is. Yeah. Fender well molding again. Nothing. Rally 2 wheels. 14 inch Rally 2's. Really a nice original wheel that came on the uh, Pontiac GTOs. They're a fantastic looking wheel. They got the correct lug nuts for them. Uh, the wheel lips uh, or um, trim rings are as nice as can be. Uh, great looking wheel on this car. A lot of originality to it. Back light. Trim around it is just as nice as you'll ever find. Hat rack. Shelf. There's no marks whatsoever on it. It's nice and black yet. Um, it has that basket weave type uh, uh, finish to it whenever you look down into it. Fantastic looking car so far. Quarter panels, the fitment. Uh, other than a couple little adjustments, the hood and the door, we can't find a, a single thing that's out of place. GTO on the back end, GTO designation. Again, down the side of this car, we're going to adjust that door in just, it's not even an eighth of an inch, it's less than that. But we're going to adjust it and then the car will be absolutely flawless down the side. Hood adjustment in the front. Let's see what's up back. Okay, the back end of our 67 GTO. 
again, the paint on this car, and bear in mind, we haven't even waxed this thing or cleaned it or anything. This is the way we got the car. Jeff washed it off, we brought it in, we did the undercarriage uh, presentation, uh, we brought it inside, and Devin and I are now just doing a walk around on it. It's the first time I've actually gone over this car. Uh, the paint on it is absolutely beautiful. And like I said, it's not even waxed or, or buffed out or anything yet. It's uh, nice. Haven't found any real imperfections on it. The fitment is gorgeous. You can see an eighth of an inch, the same type around as we had on the hood. This is off a little bit here. Same deal we had up front. The uh, deck lid needs to be adjusted down so it doesn't rattle and it actually, when you push it down, everything does line up at that point. So another adjustment for us to make. One, two, three so far. Uh, tail lights, the plastic is nice and shiny and clean yet. Uh, anodized aluminum around the uh, tail end of the car. A couple little tiny marks. Dingy, dingy, but again, ever so slight. You would never think about replacing this. It's so minuscule that it doesn't even hardly warrant a mention, but we're pointing it out to you. Same thing around here. No deterioration around these trim pieces around the uh, tail lights. Bumper fitment. Wow, front and back, spot on. You couldn't ask for a better bumper fitment in the front or the back. These are both really spot on. Chrome is as nice as can possibly be. No deterioration whatsoever. Backup lights are nice and clean looking. Uh, shiny lenses in them yet. Back into this car, other than again, a slight adjustment of this uh, deck lid, there's absolutely nothing that, uh, that we can call cosmetically on this car. Absolutely nothing. One more side to go. Let's try the uh, passenger side. Okay, passenger side of our little GTO. GTO on the back here also, if we neglected to mention, and we do have the big GTO on the side. Again, look at this bumper fitment. It does not get any better than that. Quarter panel on this side. Sharp metal the whole way. Nobody's ever replaced these quarters on the car, nor do they need to be. This is as nice a GTO as you could ever find for originality purposes. This is really a great looking car. Trim around the back window on this side. Same as the other side. Absolutely flawless. It could not possibly be any better. Wheel lip molding. No marks, no dinghies. Of course the roof on this side, just same as the other side. Roofs are usually pretty good. There's usually not much damage to a roof. No marks, no dings, no nothing. Anodized aluminum tops of the uh, fenders and doors, just as nice as can be. Again, the wipes and whiskers on this side, just as nice, and they are original. Uh, no marks whatsoever on this one. Door handle, flawless. This guy could go in just a hair, too. I think we're going to have to just give him a little bit of a tweak. It's not very much, but it'll make it as near a perfection as you could get once we adjust them in. Again, chrome around the wing. Absolutely fantastic. Cannot get any better than that. Top of the door, paint on the door. Again, no dings, no marks, no nothing anywhere. Fitment of the door to the front fender, sweet as can possibly be. GTO designation back on our stainless uh, bottom trim. Correct style, GM uh, antenna mast. Trim around this side of the front window. Absolutely no marks whatsoever. Again, look at the fitment of this. All this lines up just as sweet as could possibly be. Fender lift molding. Nada. Just as nice as could ever be hoped. You know what? We just went over this entire vehicle. Wow, this bumper fitment. Look at this. It does not get any better than the bumper fitment on this car, front and back. Just went over the entire car. I didn't find a stone chip or a mark or a dent. Uh, anything uh, cosmetically that we had to address other than a few minor adjustments to make, which are, we're not even going to count those as defects. Those will be done. Um, it is a 67 Pontiac GTO. It is a correct car. It has the original interior, not redone, which we'll see here in a, in a minute when we do the uh, 
interior presentation. One repaint on the outside, 40-year family-owned car. Correct, correct, correct. Fantastic, fantastic vehicle. Um, it does have a few options on it. It would be nice if it did have power steering or power brakes, but a lot of guys don't like power steering and power brakes. So either way, these cars were ordered both ways. I know myself, in, in 67, I had a, uh, a Hemi GTX. Didn't have power steering or power brakes. I worked just fine. Great car, fantastic condition. Uh, an iconic car in the muscle car world is the GTO, 64, 5, 6, 7. A few guys like the 8s and 9s and 70s too. But this particular car is one of the most desired GTOs that you could possibly have. This particular one is in the best condition that you could ever hope to find one, originality wise. So it's on your Hangster's website and do yourself a favor and take a look at this car because it's one of a kind and a great color. Okay, now this we're at the interior of our of us 1967 Pontiac GTO. This car is original interior. It has not been replaced, it has not been refurbished in any way, it has the original white headliner, the original white sun visors on it. it, does have the original interior front and back in this car. Uh, there's absolutely there's no imperfections on it anywhere. The uh, armrests in the back are just as nice as they were when they were new as they are up front. The, um, the window cranks front and back are just nice and shiny. The knobs are the way they're supposed to be. The uh, door handle openers are just as nice and fresh as can be. Um, dashboard again, you know, the padding is just nice and uh, resilient yet. All the uh, wood grain on the dashboard is still present even around the uh, uh, heater. Uh, fan uh, controls. Gauge cluster is just nice and clean and clear and crisp as can be. It doesn't have full instrumentation. It does have some idiot lights in it. It does have a uh, uh, speedometer and a gas gauge and a, and a clock. Original AM FM radio still retained in the dashboard. All your knobs are just the way they were when they were new. Just as sweet and can, clean as can possibly be. All the trim around the uh, windows all the white trim is as nice as it can be. The uh, lights all work in the car. The dome light, the kick panel lights. Um, nice, fresh uh, look to the brushed metal around the uh, tri-spoke steering wheel. Pontiac designation in the center still uh, intact. Crack here. Uh, let me see. Little crack here and a very, very... No, that isn't a crack. There's a crack here and a crack here in the steering wheel. Could be repaired. It's originality. You may want to leave it alone. Pontiac grab rail. Park, uh, the carpeting is just nice and black and crisp as can possibly be. Seat belts in the front. I can't see if they're in the back or not. They may be tucked in the seat. Uh, it does have the uh, Hurst T-handle on it for the uh, his and her shifter. It should have a, a Pontiac ball on it, but uh, this Hurst shifter is probably worth a lot more than a Pontiac ball right now. They're pretty expensive if you try to uh, find an original Hearst uh, T-handle. So we're going to leave that one alone. Uh, glove box still functional. The uh, wood grain on the console itself is nice as can possibly be. Um, trim, the stainless trim around the gas pedal, the brake pedal, and the parking brake pedal. Still all nice and clean and shiny the way it was when it was new. No marks on any of the seats in this car. They're just as though the car had been uh, delivered the other day. I mean, it's just as the way it was when it was absolutely new. I don't see anything amiss in this entire car. This is a nice and original Pontiac 67 GTO that you could ever find. Uh, fantastic car. You've got to take a look at it. It's on your Hangster's website. And uh, check out the rest of our videos on it, and they'll give you a, a complete overview of this car so that you can make a decision on it. We did our very best to present it to you, pick out every little defect that I could find on the vehicle in the entire video presentation. So uh, if you need anything further, pictures, information or anything, contact us here at the Hangsters and we'll fix you up with whatever you need. 1967 Pontiac GTO. Uh, really nice car. Let's see, we're waiting for traffic so we'll go through a few things. Uh, horn. Horn works. Speedometer I'm sure works, but we'll show you that shortly. The uh, uh, fuel gauge does work in the car. It has a trio of uh, uh, idiot lights, however. It does not have the optional uh, rally cluster in it. 
radio, of course, is not going to work. Absolutely not. But it is the original AM FM radio that this car was born with, so that is a good thing. Uh, wipers do not function. That's definitely a thing we have to uh, address there. Road's clear. We can go now. We'll see. Oh, turn signals. Right turn signal functions as it should. Left turn signal functions the same way. Okay. Let's go for a ride and see what we got here. Okay. Shift's nice for a second, third, just the way it should. Uh, speedometer functioning as it should. About 50 mile an hour, I got somebody behind me. Uh, steering, no hands on the steering wheel, goes down the road straight as an arrow. Let's try brakes with no hands, see what happens there. Straight as an arrow, braking, no hands. Works great. Oh, guy behind me's not happy. Uh, Runs nice, straight, and true. You couldn't ask for a nicer, smoother ride in hardness. Big difference from a Pontiac uh, GTO to a, a Chevelle. Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick have a little bit more, a better ride quality to them, a lot more solidity to them than the uh, Chevelle does. But the Chevelle still brings a bunch of money. Everybody likes those cars. Yeah, this thing runs. It's about 95 mile an hour, so we'll slow her down a little. Car pulls real well, runs nice, smooth as can be. Shifts nice and smooth. Absolutely no issues whatsoever. You can see the car goes down the road straight and true as it should. No problems. Okay, we're underneath our 1967 Pontiac GTO. Um, really, really a great original, nice looking car. Uh, nothing's really been disrupted underneath this undercarriage. We'll go over it with you and uh, see what we can find. Original equipment style uh, sway bar that uh, came from the factory on these cars. Nice big box frame section starting at the very nose and going back to the two lateral sections of uh, frame that are C-channel frames, but it's full box to that point, right about where your feet are in the uh, uh, floor of the uh, car in the front. New shocks in the front, ventilated drum brakes in the front, heavy duty Pontiac drum brakes. They function just as well as a good uh, uh, set of discs do on the front, that era type discs. They're certainly not a wheel wood, but uh, for the standard uh, uh, brake system of this car, it's more than adequate. The uh, fender wells in the front aren't disrupted at all. No one's made any attempt to jack them up on them or bend them in any way. Uh, coil springs have a nice uh, arch to them yet. Uh, no, uh, no marks or dents on the uh, K-member. New fuel pump. Standard cast iron manifolds, oil and filter was just done on the vehicle. You can see that brand new filter on it. A little tiny, tiny bit of uh, uh, dampness on the back of the uh, uh, bell housing area in front of the transmission. Not enough to drip, but there is a little tiny bit of uh, uh, oil there we'll have to check. Absolutely nothing coming off the engine itself though. <clears throat> no, no oil seepage at all off the uh, oil pan, so nothing on the motor. I'm going to call them two and an eighth inch uh, primary pipes going off the standard cast iron exhaust manifolds. Um, 
transitioning toward the rear the whole way to the uh, two stock equipment type uh, under chassis mufflers that would have come on this car uh, in 1967. The uh, tranny, the transmission, uh, no leaks on the pan. A little tiny bit, not quite enough to drip, but there is some seepage, a little bit of wetness on the uh, uh, vacuum modulator on this particular car. The um, member that holds the back of the transmission in place that transitions over from one side of the uh, C-channel uh, frame to the other. Um, absolutely no jack marks or anything on it. It really looks good. The front floor pans are the original floor pans. They don't have any indication that they've ever been replaced. Um, brake lines, original, still housed in the uh, C-channel frame. Also, the fuel line itself is uh, uh, in the frame and uh, original and uh, does not need a replacement. New speedometer cable. Back of the uh, transmission, no leaks whatsoever. Floor pans, all the structural, uh, the substructures of the floor pans, all original, all intact, and all very, very, very nice. There's no marks that have been uh, uh, used through the years to jack the car up. The uh, frame itself, the same way. I'm amazed that there's no jack marks or no bends whatsoever in it, but I don't see any indication of, of anything being jacked up on that frame through the years. Really nice, solid looking frame. Again, no leaks on the tail shaft area, on the transmission. Uh, drive shaft appears to have been out of the car. I'm going to assume there's a couple of newer U joints on it. The parking brake cables that go toward the rear are original and still functional. They are uh, original, everything's still hooked up on them. It's, it, everything looks good. The rear floor pan's the same as the front part. It's all original and uh, there's no marks, no uh, deterioration whatsoever on them. Uh, there's no, uh, <clears throat> there's no rust or, or perforations or um, corrosion or anything on this frame or the floor pans anywhere. Absolutely a great looking car so far. Let's do the second half to see what we got there. Okay, second half of our uh, 67 GTO. Again, uh, they're uh, uh, turbo style mufflers. Uh, have a nice tone to them, not objectionably loud, but a nice, nice deep tone to them. You're too, uh, Trailing arm, swing arms, uh, very, very nice. No indications that anyone's jacked it up on those or bent them through the years in any way. Uh, Pontiac used sort of a four-link rear suspension on these uh, vehicles, and the top links are just as nice and fresh looking as they could possibly be. Rear springs also are coil, and they're just as nice as you'd ever want to find, too. It does have two new uh, air shocks in the back of it, uh, so you can't adjust the right height in the rear of this. Fin. Uh, drum brakes in the rear of this car also. Real nice heavy duty brake system. Again, the, um, <clears throat> the C-channel uh, sections of the frame stop here. They begin right about where your feet are on the floor. They go back and they stop at this point and then transition back into a, a full box frame. And doesn't quit until the very, very tail end right at the gas tank. So you got a box frame in the front and the rear. A nice big C-channel section in the center. A lot of structural rigidity uh, to these Pontiac cars. A heavy duty 10 bolt Pontiac rear end, not to be confused with a 10 bolt Chevy rear end in any way. Uh, the, um, the pipes out the back, I'm going to call them 2 and an eighth also. That's about what they look like. They have two turn downs, they do not have uh, chrome tips on them. The original exhaust, or uh, the original uh, uh, gas tank in this uh, vehicle is still present. It has newer. Um, lines on it, but the tank itself is still the original tank. Up above the tank, your floor pans in the trunk are just as clean and nice as they were in 1967. The uh, frame sections to the back, the same way as the front and the, the side ones, are just as they were in 1967. Really, really nice. No marks or bends or anything in them. The uh, frame structure that grows across the back looks uh, looks just as straight as can be. I don't see anything where there's a, an indication. There's a little curvature right in the center, but I think that's from Pontiac. I don't think it has a linear line across. I think there is a little curvature at the center of the section where it goes back. <clears throat> at any rate, it doesn't have anything to do with the structural integrity of the car. The drop downs in the quarter panels, again, just all original and just as nice as can be. Uh, it, it's, it's obviously never been replaced. The uh, 
uh, transition where the uh, the pans, the drop downs come on to the quarter panels. Absolutely nothing. It's just as fresh and clean and sharp a metal as you could possibly find. Uh, there's absolutely nothing under this vehicle that doesn't present itself as an original 1967 Pontiac GTO undercarriage. Uh, you, you did see we have a little tiny bit. You can see some dampness on the bottom of the bell housing cover your inspection plate. Not enough to drip. You can't even see it, but there is a little bit on the uh, vacuum modulator. Again, not enough to drip. We'll wipe it off and we'll see what, uh, what comes on it from that point. Also, four brand new tires on this car. Uh, all four corners have all new rubber on it. Uh, the correct style, Rally 2 wheels. Nice car underneath. You really need to take a look at this one if you're looking for a GTO. Nice 67 GTO.